I'm wanting people that are willing to go into the midst of places of rejection by the somebodies and wait in that rejection long enough and not reject them preemptively, if you know what I mean. Because that's what we do sometimes, even as worship leaders and as preachers and as pastors. We will preemptively strike people with rejection before they could strike us. You don't know how to worship. No, just worship me, Jason. Oh, you don't know how to worship. And God all the time is saying, you're not worshiping me, Jason. Just worship me and allow them to reject you over and over and over and over and over again. That's what he's asking you to do. He's saying, does my approval of you really matter? If my approval of you mattered, we would, it would shake the entire earth. They wouldn't know what to do. If a million people in the earth, all that mattered to them was God's approval. A million. Or less, maybe. It would completely shake the earth. If we had a million Mother Teresas running around the globe... What do you think that would do to the earth? I'm not talking about doing what she did. I'm talking about doing it in the way she did it. Whoa. It would transform culture. Do you love me? Not how many people take you seriously. Not how much are you going to accomplish. But do you love me? Is my pleasure and my approval of you enough? Will you go <clears throat> to the ones that will not heal your rejected heart? Go to those nobodies and, <laughs> I mean, go to those somebodies and they'll say that you're somebody. Well, you're somebody. Well, you're somebody too. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just glad I'm somebody. Well, you're somebody. Well, woo, we're all somebody. So then what we got in the church seeds, that's what we've had the last several decades, is we just have a church that's filled with people that really wanted to be CEOs. <clears throat> Listen, they really wanted to be kings. And you know what? God would have been pleased if they would have just gone and done that. Why don't you just go and do it? If I want to be an ent- entertainer, I shouldn't be up here. This is wasting time for God being an entertainer. We have bitten the lure of thinking that mass media, production, and money is a sign of God's approval. That people filling stadiums is a sign of God's approval. And because of that, we are losing. But not because Jesus lost and not because he isn't victorious. Just because he's just looking for us to start walking in it. He's looking for us to really believe it. To look beyond the window there to the sky above to the open air and believe that we're not alone. To trust that he calls our name. To be able to um, do things that um, maybe will have absolutely no seeming temporary effect for maybe your entire life. But the reality is, I'll tell you right now, just in faith, it wouldn't even take that long. It'd take two years. It would take two or three years max to revolutionize our entire world if we would just buckle down and take care of those that God has given to us to take care of. That's it. It would take two or three years to completely revolutionize culture and start a multiplication process that would change the entire globe. Two or three years. I bet we're not willing to do it. I'm hoping and I'm praying that something will happen and shake us and God may just have to take the whole money thing out of the picture so we don't have anything else to do. (laughs) Right? He just may do that. He just may take it all the way out of the picture and just say, oh, sorry, you can't do it with that, so I'll just take that idol right out of the way and help you out. Now get going. (laughs) Because if money isn't there, you're not going to worry about what that guy thinks of your worship.
Because you're not trying to fill a position anymore. You're just being you. God wants to set us free. He wants us to be free. He wants you to be free. He does not want you to take on a yoke of worship in the way I worship. He wants you to take on the yoke of living your life the way Jesus lived it. He gave us the model to hear the voice of the Father. Oh, Lord, I got to wait until I hear your voice. I got to wait. I got to wait. This is our only duty for that voice to satisfy us. So I'm just going to take us into about 20 minutes of worship. Maybe we'll go longer, but I'm going to take us into some time of worship. And uh, I'm just going to begin to sing. I'm going to begin to sing, and I usually don't do it this way. Usually I speak after I worship, but I felt like I needed to just take some time and share it with you. And I'm going to just begin to sing in the next few minutes over you the very word of the Lord. And we're just going to see where the Lord, where the Lord leads us. Thanks. Hey, Samuel. Hey, before we do that, you know what we ought to do? Just like take a second, give you guys chance to breathe for a second and and let's let's uh let's just open it up you know since that's the calling of this whole conference let's just open it up i've never done this before either <laughs> just open this up for a few minutes and i want you just to just take a moment and think about what's been said and then i want you to just just if you have a question even a concern because when we go into this worship i want us to be on the same page in unity so, if you have a question about what's been said, or you have a concern, uh, you, just, you just voice that, and you, and you get it out there, and you, and you share what you, your heart needs to share, and then we're going to go into some worship. Even if you just have a question, it only takes one. It only takes a spark to get the fire going. <clears throat> How do I know if it's God talking to me and not Satan? Because I don't believe that Satan talks to me. Let me tell you something. This is a real benefit to you. Satan is real. But the reality is, is that he has taken precedence in our home and in our minds. And there is more, there is more of the antichrist satanic spirit that rests in our head that we speak over our own lives. So the fear, thank you, sweetie. That's beautiful. Do I get to color it? Like right now? Okay, I'll start doing that. Uh, uh, Okay, I will, I will. I will do that in a second. This is a very important question here, Samuel. No, um... This is, this, is the, this is the unique thing. You know what you, have more of a, you need to have more of a fear of? Hearing your own voice or the voice of man than you do Satan's voice. And your own voice will judge you because God will only allow Satan to come to you when he's allowed him to come to you. So the problem more is me and you. And we've got to stop listening to our own voice and our own inhibitions and our own things of... Uh, you know what I mean? And it start. See, God's voice, you know. Let me just tell you why I always say this to people. You don't have to do it this way. You just take it and, or leave it, you know. But why I always tell people that if you have the calling, like for instance, to be a worshiper or something like that, you know. That that's your calling. You don't have to do one thing. And you know why you don't want to do one thing? To try to make that happen? Other than just have fun and work. Because and, work is a...